I'm going to go through these problems and sh not only show you my answers but also explain a little bit how I came to these answers. So for the first problem, you have 450. And so if you're counting significant figures, notice there is no decimal place. So we are going to be counting from right to left. Remember, you can't start counting on a zero, so this zero is not significant. Therefore, you only have two significant figures. When I'm putting this into scientific notation, your coefficient, which is the number in front of the power of 10, needs to be between 1 and 10. It has to be less than 10. So I'm going to move my imaginary decimal place, because for this part, it wasn't actually there. I'm going to move it over 1, 2 places. And since I'm making a large number smaller, so making 450 into 4.5, my exponent is going to be a positive 2. So it's going to be 4.5 times 10 to the second. Notice I didn't add a 0 in the end here because that would have made it three significant figures since when I have my decimal place, I count from left to right. So just be careful with that. For scientific notation, you need to have the same number of significant figures as you did with standard notation. For the next problem, remember again, these two zeros are not significant because you don't have a decimal place and you can't start counting on a zero. So you've got one, two, three, four significant figures. I had to move my imaginary decimal place over five places this time. So making a large number smaller, I made it 3.589 times 10 to the fifth. For number three, since I'm counting left to right this time since my decimal place is present, I can't count any of these zeros. None of these four zeros are significant. Therefore, I only have one, two, three significant figures. And I move my decimal place over four places. One, two, three, four. So it's going to be 7.89 times 10 to the negative fourth. For number four, these two zeros are not significant. However, the rest of the zeros are, because once I start counting, I can count zeros. So I have five significant figures. I've moved my decimal place over two places, one, two, to make a small number larger. And so my exponent is going to be negative two. For the next problem, I move my, well, first of all, for counting significant figures, these three zeros do not count as significant figures, so just the six and the zero. So I've got two significant figures. I move my decimal place over one, two, three places, so it will be 6.0 times 10 to the negative third. Notice I did include my point zero here so that it would be two significant figures in scientific notation. For number six, since I'm counting from right to left and I can't start counting on a zero, these three zeros are not significant. Therefore, you only have one significant figure. So when I write this in scientific notation, it's going to be 1 times 10 to the third. Make sure not to write 1.0 because that, then that would be two significant figures. For number seven, I start counting from right to left, but since I can start counting on a one, I have four significant figures, and so when I put this into scientific notation, it becomes 1.001 times 10 to the third. For this one, this zero is not significant, therefore you only have two significant figures, and it becomes 3.5 times 10 to the second. For rounding, guys, I want three significant figures, so I want my seven to be significant, my zero to be significant, and this zero to be significant. So I look at the number that's directly to the right of my last digit, which is a five. Since five is five or larger, this will round the zero up to a one. Now what a lot of people will do is they'll just write 701. You need to be careful with that because 701 is a completely different answer than 70,056. So if you write 701, you're not rounding, you're completely changing the number. So make sure to add two zeros to hold the place so that you're still in the range of 70,000 even though you did round the original number. For number 10, remember these three zeros are not significant, therefore I just want the five, the nine, and this last digit right here. I look to the right, since the number to the, directly to the right is five or larger, I'm gonna round this five up and it becomes .00596. A lot of people are tempted to write .596. That is a completely different number and you haven't rounded, you've simply changed the number. So make sure to include these two zeros to hold the tenths and the hundredths place. So then this can be the thousandths and not the tenths place. For number 11, I want the one, the two, and the three 
to have three significant figures, so I look directly to the right. The five again is gonna round that three up, so it becomes 124. For these problems here, guys, I'm just putting it into scientific notation. So I'm gonna move my decimal place over one, two, three, four places. I put 1.24 times 10 to the fourth. I don't include zeros afterwards, or else you're adding more significant figures than it should have. For this one, I'm gonna move over one, two, three, four, four places, so it's going to be 3.57 times 10 to the negative fourth. For standard notation, since I have a positive exponent, what that tells me is that I'm going to need to make this number larger, so I'm going to move my decimal place three places to the right, so I get this answer. For this one, since it's a negative exponent, I've got to move it three places to the left to make it a smaller value. Okay. For here, guys, the main rule as far as adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, make sure that you keep in mind that if you're adding and subtracting, you're looking at the fewest number of decimal places. And remember, decimal places are the number of values that are the number of numbers that are after the decimal place, that are to the right of the decimal place. Um, for multiplication and division, it's based on significant figures, the fewest number of significant figures. So for example, for A, what's going on is I've got an addition problem, so you can find your answer, and then what you'll notice is that this number here has one, two, three decimal places, while this only has one decimal place. So while your answer in your calculator you get is this number, don't just write it, keep in mind the fact that you're wanting one decimal place. So that's why I leave it as 0 0.8 and not 0 0.800, et cetera, et cetera. For B, since I'm multiplying, you're gonna be basing it off of significant figures. So 23.500 has one, two, three, four, five significant figures. This number has four. So you base it off of the fewest number of significant figures, which is four. And so I've made my number, which was 3,250.05. I rounded it. But remember, if you just put a zero right here without a decimal place, you would only have three significant figures. So I had to put a decimal behind it. For C, again, since you're dividing, it's based on significant figures. And so this number here is what I got unrounded. I want four significant figures, so I look directly to the right of my nine. Two is less than five, and therefore the nine will stay as is. So it's going to be 0.1699. For D, since I'm subtracting, it's based on decimal places. So again, you get your answer. This is actually what you get in your calculator. Make sure you don't need to add any zeros since this has one decimal place and that has three. You're actually good to go because you want just one decimal place. For 17, you're just solving the problem. So if you look at it, since T is in your denominator, you're going to have to cross multiply. So 55 times T equals 330 times 2. You get this value. Since you're wanting to isolate t, you need to divide by 55 on both sides, and t will be 12. For number 18, sorry, it's a little blurry. For number 18, you're solving for x, so what you want to do is subtract by 5, so it's going to be 4x equals 20. Then you can, get, you can isolate x by dividing by 4, and you get x equals 5. For number 19, this is a density problem, so the first thing you should write as soon as you realize it's a density problem is the formula. So density equals mass divided by volume. Then as you read through the problem, recognize that even if it didn't say this has a density of, by seeing grams per centimeter cubed, those are the units for density, and so you're gonna, th you know that this is your density value. Then, since you know that 599, whenever you see grams, that's the unit for mass, that's going to be your mass. So don't let the wording confuse you. Let the units help you out quite a bit. So I've got 3.17 for my density equals my mass, which is 599, divided by my volume. Since volume is in the denominator, you're going to want to cross multiply. So 3.17 times V equals 599 times 1, so I've got that up here. To get, isolate V, you have to divide by 3.17 on both sides, and you end up with this really, really long answer. The first thing that I'm going to deal with is units. So since the units for density are grams divided by centimeters cubed, and here, for ma since density is mass divided by volume, and my units for mass are grams, the units for volume have to be centimeters cubed. And you get that from the density units, which is very helpful. Then what you're going to have to do is figure out significant figures. So 3.17, because you're multiplying and dividing, that's why you base it off of sig figs. 3.17 has three significant figures, 599 has three, so your final answer needs three, which I wrote here. The way you know that, you can draw a line here, since nine, which is the number directly to the right of, five eight, of sorry, 188, the nine will round the eight up. 
Okay, so I, I looked at significant figures. I also looked at units. For 20, guys, this is as soon as you see a conversion problem, that's going to be our dimensional analysis, the crisscross swoosh. So you've got 4.52 teragrams, and I want to convert to grams. Since you're going directly to grams, which is your base unit, you will be just doing a one-step problem. So I've got, I'm in teragrams right now, so whatever you want to get rid of, put it on bottom. So teragrams on bottom, grams up top. And if you look at your table that I provided for you on page 24 of your workbook, you'll see that 10 to the 12th grams, and in your workbook it says base units, that's just it can be grams, it can be seconds, it can be liters, it can be, um, what are other ones? It can be any of those. It can be meters. Um, so 10 to the 12th grams equals one teragram. So they're 10 to the 12th grams in one teragram because this unit is quite a bit larger than grams. Since this is in your numerator, you know that you have to multiply. So 4.5 times 10 to the 12th is actually going to be your answer and you're in grams. Just a quick check on sig figs. Two, I've got two here, I've got two here, so I'm good to go. For 21, guys, keep in mind that this is a, I'm squaring my units, okay? So I start out, I write my given, I've got 1.2 feet squared. I crisscross swoosh dimensional analysis. I put feet squared on bottom, inches squared up top. Now, if you remember, your relationship between inches and feet is that there are 12 inches and one foot. Now, I don't really care about this relationship. That's not what I'm asking for. I'm asking for inches squared and feet squared. And so what you're going to need to do is take this relationship, the 12 inches, and you're going to have to square that entire value. So 12 squared becomes four, 144 inches squared in one foot squared. So since I'm squaring my units, I square the relationship, the 12 and the one. One squared is just one. Now, since this is in my numerator, I'm gonna multiply. So 1.2 times my 144, and I end up getting 172.8 inches squared. Since there are two significant figures here, and this is an exact value, this is given to you, and it's not a measured value, I'm gonna have two significant figures. So I have my one and my seven, I look directly to the right of my 7, since 2 is less than 5, this is going to just stay as 7, it's going to round down to 7. Don't write 17 for your answer though, because that's not a rounded value of 172. You need to make sure that you put a 0 to hold this place. Remember the 0 won't be significant since you don't have a decimal place, so your answer is going to be 170 inches squared. Now for number 22 guys, if you can do it in one step awesome. Do it. I will not take off in any way, shape, or form. However, I know that a lot of people have issues with doing it in just one step, and so I like to do it in two. Since I have two prefixed units, right, I've got deciliters and I've got deciliters, what I like to do to simplify it is first get into liters. So I have 35.2 deciliters. I'm going to go first to my base unit, which is liters. So I put deciliters on bottom, liters up top. I'm now in liters. I do another dimensional analysis. I put liters on bottom, deciliters up top. Make sure you distinguish between deca and deci, guys. Then I'm going to put in the relationships that you have on page 24 of your workbook. So 10 liters equals one deciliter, and 10 deciliters equals one liter. Okay. Since these are relationships and they are exact, I'm just going to be looking here for significant figures in my final answer. So I've got 35.2. I'm going to, since this is in the numerator, I'm going to multiply by 10, multiply by 10 again, and I end up getting 3,520 deciliters. Notice this is three significant figures, so I'm fine. If you want, you can put this into scientific notation, especially as we get larger and larger numbers. So I can say this is 3.52 times 10 to the third because I had to move my decimal place three places to make a large number smaller. Remember still to put your units. Now 23 is a density problem based on the lab that we did in class. The whole point of this, guys, is that I, while you can easily find your mass by putting it on a scale, sometimes volume is more tricky to find. Sometimes you, the shape of your object is not a cube, so you can't do length times width times height. Sometimes it has kind of a convoluted shape to it, and so what we do is what's called water displacement. Specifically, you start out with a certain amount of water in a graduated cylinder, so in this case it was 35.5 mils. You gently put your object inside and the water will rise. Now in this case, it rose to 49.5. And so what that tells me, this difference 
tells me the volume of my object. So I do 49.5 milliliters minus 35.5 and I get 14.0. Now, a lot of people will just write 14, so make sure that you are careful. Since I'm subtracting here, you need to base this off of decimal places. This has one decimal place, this has one decimal place. So your final answer must be 14.0 mils. And the reason why that matters is when I'm gonna find my density in a second, this should be three significant figures and not two. Now I'm gonna find my density now because I know mass and I know my volume. So density equals mass divided by volume. My mass is 12.0 grams, which is given to you. I found my volume, which is 14.0 milliliters. And so I divide and I get 0.8571 dot dot dot. Remember your units for density are the units for mass divided by the units for volume, which are grams divided by milliliters, which I have right here. And so this is three significant figures. This is three significant figures. So I'm gonna round this. I'm gonna keep the eight, the five, and I'm gonna see if I have to round the seven up. Look directly to the right. Since one is less than five, this seven stays as a seven. And that's my final answer. Okay, and that's it, guys.